Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley and uh, I'm going to call this part two. You know, I, I was recently at the doctor and he prescribed some medication for my sinuses. And as we were sitting there, um, he had a nurse, an assistant, I, I don't know what, what you would call her, but she's supposed to be writing stuff down, right? So the doctor tells me, all right, uh, I'm going to give you this medication. You're going to take it six tablets on day one, five tablets on day two, four tablets on day three. And then when you go to fly that following day, you're going to take five tablets again on the day you're flying, right? I have a sinus issue. Okay. And then he says, then the next day take four. And he goes, honestly, you could do three, two, one, or you could just stop. That's enough. We just want to be sure when you're, when you're flying that your nasal cavity is clear. Got it. Tells it to me. And then he says, when you have your return trip, now, now he questions me to make sure I get it, right? He goes, so what are you going to do? And I go, well, three days before I fly, I'm going to go, well, three days prior to the day of flying, I'm going to go six, five, four. And then on the day I'm flying, I'm going to do five. And then he goes, well, what's the math on that? And he's six, five. And I'm going, and I'm going to 30. But so I get the math. He goes, all right. And he looks at her. He goes, just give him 50, right? Because you're doing the math, right? So just to make sure you have enough. And if you want to do the three, three, two, one, you can, if you don't want to, it's not a big deal. I just need the six, five, four, five again when you fly. Got it. So apparently they call in the prescription and I get a call after hours from the doctor's office. It's probably about five 30 and says, uh, listen, do you, um, the doctor prescribed you something, but the pharmacist kicked it back. He goes, do you remember what the doctor's instructions were? No, great thing is I have a ridiculously good memory, as I just demonstrated, I think. My wife says I forget everything. I forget to, to do what I say I'm going to do, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but anyway, with work, you know, I went, no, he said take six, then take five, then take four. Then on the day I fly again, take five. And then I said, he goes, once I land it, you know, if the next day I could take three, two, one if I want, or we're good and do that forward going back. He goes, she goes, okay, that's a little scary, right? So the person in the room that's supposed to be writing this shit down, apparently didn't write it down. Then when I had called, right, I had to bring a CAT scan with me. I'm just giving, when you give your own examples, then you see, right? It's just, this is where I get the passion and, and the understanding that, you know, people make mistakes and, you know, we're relying on, the medical professionals, and I'm just talking about medical professionals for, for this video. I'm not anti-doctors or anything, da, 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 right? But they didn't know. So anyway, so the, I bring the CD, and when I call, I when I got the CD, I got it like two weeks, three weeks before, and I said, hey, should I drop it? No, we don't take CDs. We don't accept CDs. I go, okay, that's kind of weird, okay. I mean, now my office doesn't take originals. I'll make a copy, so I assume maybe they do that. So I bring the CD in on the day of my appointment, right? And I'm thinking he looks at it, he puts it in the machine, he looks at it and he hands it back to me. And he says, okay, now you're gonna schedule your surgery you know, with this woman, they're gonna talk to you and schedule it. Okay, great. So she sees me holding the CD and she takes the CD from me. Now I pause and wait, cause I'm thinking maybe she's gonna write something down. Maybe she's gonna make a copy, you know, I don't know. And then she's like, okay, well, that's it. Thanks, have, have a great day, Ms. Foley. I go, um, you have my CD. Do you want me to take No, no, we're, we, we keep the CDs. <laughs> you can, the crickets in my head, right? So <laughs> you, you keep the CDs? I, yeah, well, you're having surgery. We're going to keep the CD. Okay, I mean, they told me on the phone they did it. Okay, the doctor gave it back to me. Then she goes, no, no, I'm going to keep it. I, I'm going to personally put it in your file so the doctor has it prior to surgery. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So today, as I was telling you in part one, right, I, I had to get a, uh, a sonogram of my throat. They said the doctor didn't order a CD. That's great. That's nice. I want a CD. I'll bring it to the doctor. Right. Now I walk to the, I go in and she goes to check me. Go, no, I'm not here to check in. I'm just dropping off a CD. And she goes, Oh, for surgery. I go, well, not necessarily for surgery. The other issue that you know, I was talking to the doctor about, 
Um, I just wanted to make sure you get a copy. We, we, we don't take copies. Well, I, I said the radiologist is going to read it, but you know, two heads are better than one. She goes, okay. All right, what's your name? Okay. I'm just going to call her B because I don't want anyone to figure this out. B. Okay, B, now I know who I dropped it off with. Okay, you got it. You'll make sure that he sees it. Yes. Now, what will I do, right? Because of my personality, I will call tomorrow. I will leave a message for the doctor. I And then if he doesn't get back to me, I'll call his physician's assistant, PA. And I'll go, hey, did you get that? I gave it to B, right? At the front desk. You'd be surprised. And you know how I know? Because recently, when my dad has his doctor's appointment, we sent a bunch of medical records. And we have a teledoc. I'm on the appointment. My dad's on the appointment. And I go, all right, doc, well, based on the records, what'd you see? He goes, I, I don't have the records. Right? Doc, I sent I sent the records. I confirmed with your assistant yesterday. Oh, well, they're not, they take a day or two to upload. Well, then why are we here? Why are you billing? Because it's like, Hey, you got to look through the computer and, and diagnose. This is the stuff that goes on, folks. It's not just the medical profession. It's the dental profession. It's the, it's every profession. It's the legal profession. It's lawyers who are lazy or hire shit staff. You need to be detailed, right? As an attorney, I got to be detailed. I can't miss stuff. I, I go over each client's file a dozen times to make sure I don't miss anything. I think it's necessary. And if you're not that diligent, maybe you need a backup, but who are we hiring? We all say, right? You all hear the words like, our, you know, our society is going downhill. People don't want to work. People aren't competent, da, da, da. Yeah, I agree. So should you really go, yeah, okay. When your doctor goes, here, take this. Or should you ask a couple follow-up questions? Should you you know, it, it, it almost forces you to be the, the internet doctor. And I'm not saying to do that or the internet lawyer, right? But if, if you don't get that vibe from the professional, maybe your intuition's telling you something. Mine certainly is. And that's why I've decided to start taking on medical malpractice cases. Because I think that there's a problem in the system. And I think that enough Attorneys, they only want the slam dunk. I want to look through the medical records. You know, I want to check things. I want to see, hey, what, what medicines we got? I want to see if that stuff's listed. Because when it's not, I know, you know, call me Sherlock Holmes here. I, I know that someone messed up. And did they mess up and deviate from the standard of care? Anyway, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley talking about the medical profession. You need me, call me. See ya.